It is uh, the first day of auditions. It's Monday. It's very strange for all of us. Obviously, being drummerless is something that we never really pictured happening or imagined, but here we are. We've been Dream Theater together as a family for over 25 years. John and I went to Berkeley, met Mike there in 85. It's hard to believe that we've been around for over 20 years, you know, and, um, you know, Mike and I and, and John, we've known each other for so long, and you reflect and you say, you know, we're the same guys that we started this when we were real young, going to college for the first time, or, uh, you know, middle school, whatever, and, and you kind of look at each other and you're like, I can't believe we're still doing this. It's amazing, you know, like, we, we we formed this band when we were young little teenagers with the whole world in front of us, and uh, now here we are, you know, in our 40s with families, and, and you know, we've done, we've been together more than half our lives, and we've shared an entire lifetime together. It's time once again, Dream Theater, live in the Chaos in Motion World Tour. To us, it's been like this unstoppable empire that we have built. We've actually built our, our business and the way we do things in such a way that we're in a position where life in Dream Theater land is great. This is our sixth time playing here. I remember just to play here once was a dream come true. So it even makes it that much more sort of shocking that, that he would make this type of decision. I mean, if somebody would have inter interviewed me about the band and the state of things, I probably would have said that night, oh, things are, you know, great. Dream Theater is just really yeah. solid. We all value what we do. We're responsible. It's an amazing working situation. And We could all speculate, you know, Mike's really the only person that could answer those types of questions, why he left and why he felt he had to do what he had to do. I guess when you've been doing it this long, it, it, it can become kind of stale at times. We actually were planning on having a meeting to discuss when, well, where we'd record our next album. Before we started, Mike said, hey, before you guys get into this, I got some things I have to say. So uh, he basically told us that he wanted uh, Dream Theater to go like on a hiatus and come back five years later and have a glorious reunion. And uh, I think it was about then that our jaws kind of hit the floor. The four of us, like in, in total unison, we were like, oh, what? None of us we had... saw that coming. It was like just going 100 miles an hour into a cement wall. The biggest thing is that it's heartbreaking, you know? I don't know if people understand all this. It's not only we've been a band, but we literally have been a family. Like, we've been through everything together in our lives you know, in each other's wedding parties, and our kids all know each other, and they're friends, and we've had parents get sick and pass away and been to funerals, and we've, we've been through everything together. So the, the, the biggest feeling about it is, is like it's heartbreaking, it's disappointing. Like I said, this is a family, we love Mike. This isn't what we wanted, we never expected this. And, and now here we are. And uh, you know, change happens, it might not be what we want or expect. But, but I think, you know, all of us really felt strongly about, you know, let's just, we got to continue doing what we love and working together. There was no, like, stopping us. we feel incredibly fortunate to be in a spot in our lives and our career that, you know, we have seven guys, like the world's top drummers coming down to audition for us. That's like, 
what a privilege, it, you know? It's kind of surreal. Dream know? Theater gets to play with the world's greatest drummers. You know, it's like, wow. <laughs> I spent something like two weeks just playing the songs, listening to the music. This is the Dark King in the studio where I've been preparing for the Dream Theater audition. Here we go to the group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a great opportunity to play with one of the most successful progressive rock metal bands in the history of music. I'm a bit nervous because I never really auditioned. I'm very, very nervous. <laughs> Really excited to see if the chemistry's there and to see what we can come up with jamming. Uh, I think the potential could be really killer. I feel quite relaxed right now, although as the date draws closer, the excitement is building. I'm just going through my checklist, travel documents, block forms for a lot of those tunes. There's, there's work to be done. I'm just really excited. I want to be in this band. It's again, it's not a geek to me. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I like that word. Um, no, no. But you have your soul has to be in there. I mean, every little hit. Okay. Time to go. I took the trip to New York uh, today because my audition with Dream Theater is tomorrow. I received an email from the management uh, saying that the band had interest in me auditioning for them. It was an interesting feeling because I was very excited and at the same time Mike Portnoy is a, is a close friend of mine and I was wondering if there would be any weird feelings inside because that's a, that's a good friend of mine. The stuff that they write I feel comes out of me anyway as a composer or a drummer. The other thing is that I'm not looking to replace Mike or what he did. Number one, I'd have one job to do, which I could focus on. And number two, I'd be really happy. It seems to just work. The idea, anyway, I hope I get it. Fancy. <laughs> oh man, had a great day today. Got up, had Two big cups of coffee, got on an airplane from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, arrived in New York City. Here for the Dream Theater edition, which is uh, really nice. It should be really fun and lots of excitement going on. Looking forward to meeting the guys as well. stuff in it. What do we got here? To the world's greatest drummers, welcome to the auditions. We're sorry we don't have a practice room, but we do have something for you to pound on. Please attack this drum with the mallet we provided. Just as you're going to do for real in the studio. From the band and all of your friends. Team of Dream Theater. Awesome. Yeah. Oh goodness, what have I done to the bedspread? Well, I was on vacation actually uh, about a month ago, my wife and I, and um, I got a phone call from Frank, the management, asking if I'd be interested in doing the audition, um, which of course obviously I, I was. I don't have anything built up in my head. I've just learned from experience to never build anything up. I expect that we'll have a good time jamming and you know just meeting each other and whatnot, but uh, I haven't really thought it out or made any type of preparations as far as like how things are gonna go. I feel calm about the audition. My plan for the rest of the night will be to get settled and I'll go over the outlines of the songs, I'll listen to them. I plan on busting something tomorrow. <laughs> Well, it's the night before the auditions. It's gonna be about midnight, and uh, I just came back to the studio to pack up some things. And then tomorrow, we start this madness and see where it goes. Very excited about it. Should be interesting, to say the least. Uh, 
10 after 9 in the morning. I guess I'm getting a late start because I wanted to be there at 10. But uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. Anyway, it's drummer day. We've got to go in and set up and get ready for the first drummer, who I think is the um, master, Mike Mangini. In a few hours, Mike Mangini will be here. You know, he's a great personality, too. He's a fun person. Check, check. Hello, Q3. I brought you to New York with me. This relationship is getting deep. Ooh. <laughs> The drummer is everything in a band right, when it comes to just the pocket and the power. And here we are today, starting a new chapter. Ready for this or what? Uh, I'm almost ready. And then we'll go through the songs we're thinking, Nightmare. We thought it would be cool to, to just like, you know, see how their creative minds work. Maddie, how are you, sir? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good? Okay. You sure? Ah, look who ah, it is. Here we go. Mr. Mangini. What's going on, nice man? Nice to see Thanks you. Absolutely. Thanks What's up, Mike? Me. Yeah, man. How are you? Everybody knows Mike Mangini, yeah. right? Yeah. My gosh, he played on three of my solo albums. He's just an exceptional drummer. He has a, a reputation around the world for being an incredible player. He's actually, when, when this all went down, he was like, one of the first names that came, you know, was on everybody's mind. Welcome, you're the first victim. <laughs> right? Get it started out on the yeah. right vibe. Absolutely. Cool. I actually remember during one of our shows, Mike Mangini doing a solo with Mike Portnoy in the same set during a Dream Theater show. I knew he played in Extreme. I knew he played on James's stuff. And that night when I saw him play, I was like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> it's like ridiculous. You guys ready? We're ready, let's do it. Made it rock. All right, Jordan. Go. Uh, so, Does this hurt you? Does this right. hurt you? What's that? We don't have the uh, thunder sample, I guess. All right. I don't have it. I don't think I do. All right. I do. I can hear it. Might as well make it authentic. The jamming was like putting pieces in a puzzle. And for me, it was just happy, it was calming. I, I clearly understood what they were doing, not just the pattern, but with the tone, with the musicality, with the, the energy and all that. It just, it, the equation just hit me. I just felt great. Mike has a just great way of just eye contact, connecting with everybody, like you yeah. said, listening. And I thought what was cool about what he did is, you know, he he made us feel comfortable. Yes. He played Portnoy's parts, but in the way that he played them, not only were we comfortable, but he was accenting different yeah. things, yeah. like maybe a little bit more yeah. here, you know, here or there. And it didn't like throw us off. It was just like, wow, that's yeah. so cool. It, it made me feel like he had a really strong awareness of what each one of us was playing. Nice. That was awesome. That was awesome. At the end of the first song, I felt like I just caught a big bass. I just felt happy and well. <laughs> I'm shaking. That's the warm up. My house. Oh my god. <laughs> that was killer, Mike. Yeah, thanks. It was great. It was, it was spot on. Spot on. We just figured we'd throw one of the hardest songs at them. 
times that song is really just strange arrangement-wise and it's odd times. And if a drummer can play that song with us, they can kind of play any song. He's so technically advanced as a drummer. I mean, he could do things with one limb that people can't do with two, you know? He's at a one-of-a-kind level. It's just guys just don't play like that. Right. That was amazing, man. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And you guys as well. You really put your whole self into it. Yeah, man. While I was setting up, I looked over at John Mayung's music stand, and there was stuff on there that he was learning. And I was thinking, well, if he has to take the time to learn it, what's going to happen to me when I try it? Now that we got that out of the way, okay. we want to do a couple of things. Maybe do a little bit of jamming. Okay, that sounds and, fun. And uh, throw a couple of riffs your way mm -hmm. that you haven't heard before. Great. Working with other drummers, I know, I kind of know some of the things that could be a little bit complicated. Mm -hmm. Because nine, four, nine, nine but it's nine, nine, eight, four, four. You want to write it down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of drummers that can come in and play the songs. It's one thing to play a song, but do they understand musically what's going on? The band uh, should throw us curveballs. They should throw everything at us. Absolutely. They have to, they have to find a, a marriage partner. They got to give us everything they can. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. And he freaking nailed everything. I mean, first of all, his personality just comes off as he's just really nice person, he seemed fun, and uh, preparedness-wise, he just played oh, through the songs. He didn't make any mistakes. One, a two, a three, yeah. My audition went as well as I thought it would with regard to playing the music. You passed all three tests. Thank you. The song test, the jam test. Wrong. And I feel extremely at peace about it all. I'm serious, yeah. the bar is set high right now. Yeah. Good. So thank you for all that. Yeah, oh, no. amazing way to start. We literally could have played a show tonight without rehearsing and went on stage and played with him. The thing is, I am not trying to replace Mike and the things that he brought to this. I, I, first of all, I, I love Mike. I'm close with him. He's, he said more nice things about me than any other drummer on all these magazines, so I like him on that level, and I love what he plays, but I am not what he was in this. A really important thing for us is that, you know, wh whoever our new drummer is, when not only when people hear the new record, but when the fans see us, needs to be an undeniable person. Mm -hmm. You know, not somebody that somebody says, oh, I don't know about that, you know, has second thoughts. So it's, I felt really comfortable with you behind there. Great, thank you. Well, this is where we're at. We're obviously, I think you know the situation. You, you certainly set the bar really high, but you're not the only one over the next three, three days. So yes. we do have seven guys, including you and we're going to try to come to a decision as quickly as we can. It's in our best interest. My chances of, of being the next drummer for Dream Theater is as, as high as they can get at this point because those guys, it's like they're choosing a wife or something. And, you know, there's, I guess, seven pretty girls. <laughs> I'm looking very much forward to hearing the outcome as soon as possible because I'm very excited about this. Mangini did set the bar very high. But there's other drummers coming in that are absolutely incredible players. All will be revealed very, yeah, be very good. shortly, I think. In the blink of an eye, this will be over and we'll make our decision. On the next episode, things are heating up as the world's best drummers compete for this dream job. That was great. One of the best improvisations we've ever had. 
and one may have put an end to the search. I was speechless watching this guy. Your audition was fantastic. That was almost incredible. Yeah, easily. By far. Yeah.